Chapter 8. Bread Sandwich. So as not to be jostled at the door, Zoe waited a few moments before ambling off to her first lesson. Amazingly, maths, which she always found cataclysmically boring, passed without incident, as did geography, where she wondered if her newfound knowledge of Oxbow Lakes might come in useful in adult life. During the lessons, Zoe stole an occasional glance into her blazer inside pocket and saw that the little rat was sleeping. It must really enjoy a nice lie-in. At break time, Zoe locked herself in a cubicle in the girls' toilets and fed the rat some of the bread she was meant to be saving for her lunch. She made her own packed lunch whenever there were scraps of food still in the house. However, this morning there was absolutely nothing in the fridge other than a few cans of very strong lager, so she made herself a bread sandwich out of some stale slices left out on the side. The recipe was simple. Bread sandwich. You will need three slices of bread. Instructions. Take one slice of bread and put it between the other two slices of bread. The end. My new cookbook, 101 New Ways to Make a Bread Sandwich, is out next year. Unsurprisingly, the rat likes bread. Rats like most food we like. Zoe sat on the toilet seat and the rat perched on her left hand while she fed it with her right. It gobbled up every last mouthful. There you go, little... At that moment, Zoe realised she had yet to name her tiny friend. Unless she wanted to give it a name suitable for a boy or a girl, like Pat or Les or Viv, she would first have to find out if it was indeed a boy or a girl. So, Zoe carefully picked the rat up to have a closer look. Just as she was trying to undertake a more thorough investigation, a thin arch of yellow liquid sprayed from just underneath the rat's tummy, narrowly missing Zoe and decorating the wall. The girl now had a definitive answer. She was convinced that the we had come from a tiny little spout, though it was impossible to look again with the rat now wriggling in her hands. But she was sure it was a boy. Zoe looked up for inspiration. On the toilet door, some older girls had scratched obscene sentences with a compass. Destiny is a complete beep, Zoe read, which I think we can all agree is very rude, even if she is. Destiny would have been a stupid name for a rat, especially a boy rat, thought the little girl. Zoe continued searching the names on the door for inspiration. Rochelle? No. Darius? No. Buster? No. Tupac? No. Jamal? No. Snoop? No. Meredith? No. Kylie? No. Beyonce? No. Tyrone? No. Chantel? No. Despite being crowded with words and some rude drawings, the toilet door wasn't providing as much inspiration as Zoe had hoped. She sat up from the toilet seat and turned around to flush so as not to alert the suspicion of the girl she could hear in the next cubicle. At that moment, she spied some posh writing amidst all the ingrained stains in the toilet bowl. Armitage Shanks, she read out loud. It was only the name of the toilet manufacturer, but the little rat's ears twitched when she said it, as if in recognition. Armitage, that's it, she exclaimed. It was a suitably upper-class sounding name for this special little fellow. Suddenly, there was a loud thud on the toilet door. Boom, boom, boom. Who have you got in there, you little squirt? Came a guttural voice from outside. No, thought Zoe, it's Tina Trotz. The spit from today's flob had still not entirely come off Zoe's little freckled face. Tina was only 14, but built like a trucker. She had big hands that could punch, big feet that could kick, a big head that could butt, and a big butt that could squash. Even the teachers were scared of her. Inside the cubicle, Zoe was quaking with fear. There's no one in here, said Zoe. Oh, why did I say that? She instantly thought, 
the mere act of saying that there was no one in there meant there was definitely, without doubt, 100% someone in there. Zoe was in terrible danger, but only if she opened the door. For now, she was safe inside the Get out of the bomb right now before I smash the door in, threatened Tina. Oh dear.